H and H IC100. I think that's this the model. Uh, this is a solid state amplifier, two channels, tremolo, um, reverb, sustain on there, and uh, studio and stage, and we've got reverb as well. Check out the the uh, panel. If I just switch out the the lights for a second, check that out. So the uh, the indicators for the controls are, are lit, background lit. I don't know whether the LEDs will probably be uh, a bulb or something in there. But we'll see because we're probably going to have to get the top off of this because there is a few, as I said, a few dry joint issues. Take all the lights back on. So you can hear the background noise from it now. But if we touch this presence control, we've got issues. You can see. So this, 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 that looks like a shade of the old dry joint syndrome. Tremolo works. Like so. Bass works okay. And the other, let's just see if we can turn this channel down. So this is the other channel. Brilliance we've got on there. So we're just having a look at the back now. So we've got a voltage selector. Ooh. Well, you don't like that. Let's have to have a look at that. Yeah. Fuse, solder, two amp anti surge. We've got um, two outputs for the vol. For two, the two outputs for the speakers. Uh, transistors are at the back of this plate. The output transistors, no doubt. We've got a slave. Uh, we should never see our amplifiers now, do we, slaves? That's because there isn't any slaves anymore. And they, they did, I remember the slaves for this. Looked exactly the same, just a single volume control on it. Uh, output to mixer. Uh, Vibrato reverb foot switch, which is probably long gone. Power amp input. And the sustain foot, foot switch, which is also probably long gone. So... We're going to get the back, the back of it. We're going to get the top off of this. So I prop these up because it's very slim. This amp. And see if I pop it down there. It's a bit hard to see everything that's going on on it. So, but we're going to take the top off. And to get the top off, you take the sides off. These. Anyone who's let me just back back out the camera a little bit. If we have a look, get that up there. You can see we've got these um, these screws here. And you, you just put in a very large screwdriver. You must have got incredibly strong hands, and I haven't. So we just we, we need quite a, a beefy screwdriver for that. Let's have a look what we've got. Ka-ching! That should do the job. So we just lift that up, and you can see we just turn those. And obviously, been done by a very strong mister. So that took me all I've got to undo that. Try the other one. There we go. This thing is incredibly long as well. It's not just slim, but it's very long. So there we are. So we've got the top off it, troidal transformer. We've got the coupling capacitors. There's a, a drip of solder on that one. So it looks like those have been out before. We shall have to look at that in a bit more detail. Oh. So these. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the other camera uh, for, and we can delve into it a bit more. I can't quite get into it with this camera. Yeah, so you can see that capacitor has been changed at some time. Um, there's loads of electrolyte seeping out the top. Um, it's been crudely soldered in. The wires have just been pushed in. It's been badly soldered. If you look at the corner there, they've burnt it with a soldering iron. And then there's solder excess solder just left there on the side how did you burn that with a soldering iron it's, an, it's a one t terminal solder so obviously not a professional that's done that not even an amateur um, a word that I could not use on here to describe that person that is a 5000 microfarad that one 
and it also has a date of 1995 of the 4th month I would think that is for April 1995 I'm guessing so that I don't know I don't remember these amps I thought these amps were made in the 70s so they look like they've been changed at some point so that doesn't look very good now the pots if we look down here um, they're not soldered into the board if we just have a look just get down there so that presence control it could be the pot that's uh, not very healthy rather than our thinking dry joints into the board but this, they're not wired into the board they just they're done properly for a change so we just if we just carry on looking through um just try and back out a bit with the camera that's it often guilty of putting too much zoom on this because it's such a little tiny screen on this camera and you get into the habit of blowing things up yeah you see the reverb there and there can't really call that a tank can you it's all right there's someone's address in here and i'm trying not to get it on film so we've got a board at the back here as well which is the output board there but here's something to look at so check out these fuses so someone has soldered these fuses in or should i say cold soldered these fuses in and you can see i've just eased that one out there what a mess so instead of just cleaning these up and pinching them together to make the fuses tighter they've just soldered them in what a mess so that's going to have to be uh, sorted out. That's really poor, deary me. Words fail me. And what's been going on there? Is that just too lazy to snip that off at the factory? They look dry jointed as well to be cold soldered. So were they one time joined to there? I don't know. But that that looks all looks a bit a bit strange so they need some attention as well so it looks like this has been into the uh bns workshop bodget and scarper let's have a look over here now there's that voltage selector there and uh, well that all seems solid you know I, well i won't say solid but it, it seems safe enough i suppose hmm so i've look, looking at these electrolytics on the board here i don't see any uh, don't see any looking grubby the thing with this amplifier you see is is it's a budget amplifier it's quite old um and it's just really about making this reliable and safe so reliability i.e that part possibly this capacitor because that looks a bit grubby and may have to be changed and also it's not wired up very well and uh, safety i'm afraid these fuse as well they i won't say they're not they, they're unsafe but they're a bit of a mess so we need to sort that out as well so there's a few issues going on there and we need to get to the to the bottom of them right we've got these caps fitted and in the end um, we had a bit of a search around to see what we could order and we ordered these um, J-Cons and this this 6800 microfarad at 63 volts so they are just a little a higher microfarad but they're also higher voltage and you can see there 5000 we add in at 50 volts working They're the old ones and you can actually see that that looks quite nasty the uh, they're a swine to get in actually well to get the old ones out because they'd riveted them and obviously if we just back back away you can see that the all being on its side the reverb tank being under there so i just cut i ended up cutting the brackets off and everything because these are slimmer capacitors so i've just put some new these are uh, 25 mil, so I've just put some new um, new brackets 
and then put the capacitors in there soldered on the terminals so we've got those done but now looking into this uh, fuse problem so i've unsoldered one of the fuses and you can see there what they've actually done and they've snapped off because i unsoldered that and then i realized if obviously the fuse was hiding the fact that they've snapped the uh, the fuse holder there how on earth have they done that i don't know i don't even understand how you could do that so that's why they've soldered that up and i'm presuming the other one's about the same so they're wrecked what a nightmare you know i never understand why people come in these amps and just bodge them up um, these have obviously worked loose at some point and they've obviously just tightened them up from the back and luckily they've not twisted enough to snap the sockets off but then have they because i've got these two wires here and it looks like someone's been in there as well dear oh dear just the mess people mate so it looks like those wires have been replaced with these at some point these must when it was new they would be side by side um and those wires that are protruding out of there must have gone in there what they've done is they've bent these pins right up on this socket Did you see that what they've done there and then soldered these up onto there and they didn't even bother to trimming these off you know what on earth that is just garbage that's all burnt with the soldering iron but that's it it is what it is i'm afraid with that so now we've got to think about how we're going to sort these fuse holders out the chances are, can i get some that will actually fit on that board that's delayed this repair from being finished yet again i thought it was strange why they must have sold them in but then you see all sorts of strange things it, never no i'd never kind of looked in running when i put the iron on it and looked and i thought oh dear and as the fuse came off there was obviously no you can see that snapped out of there so what are we going to do with those hmm well one option would be to mount mount two on here and then wire into them the other option would be to try and find some of those and order them. Yes. So we're going to have to have a think about that one. And this amp, you know, the more you start to look in it, you can, you know, kind of didn't pay that much attention to those. I noticed them, but then when you start to you focusing on one job at a time so i'm focusing on the caps which we've done there and then suddenly you look you start looking at other things and then you realize there's just even more i mean this amp runs okay with those sockets like that there's no problems just it just looks a mess and when you've been in here you know as a tech you've been in and and you, you you're reluctant to leave things like that because there's always that thing oh last person in here must have done that it's just a mess right so i'm going to go off now and see what i can find for these uh, for these fuse holders so here's uh, one of these fuse holders that i've taken out <clears throat> i've actually find, found some of these on cpc i've just got to check the measurements that the pins are correct you can see they're pretty bad shape again soldered onto it and then that pin snapped off so yep yeah, not great so we'll see if we can get some replacements for those and uh, change those and this amps finished once we've done that the presence part on the front was uh, a bit iffy but i've put some switch cleaner in that and that sorted that out so and i think i am just going to tidy these sockets up um don't want anybody thinking i've left that like that so that's definitely gonna going to be done Right, so we've got these sockets out. What a mess they are. And uh, yes, the uh, as I tried to straighten that one out, they bent it over, they just snapped off. Just an absolute mess. And uh, you can see where they've been burnt with the iron. The 
Yeah, there you are. Sorry about that. And also inside they are badly corroded anyway. One of them was cut in art, so they're not great. So I've got a couple more that I'm going to fit in here and do these properly. Right, we're having a look at this um, this H and H. We've finished it now. So we've got a couple of channels, usual things, treble, middle, and bass. We've got presence on this channel, not on that one. We've also got tremolo on this channel. We've got reverb on both channels. We've got this sustain on this one, and we've also got this studio and stage switch. We've just got the tremolo on there. We'll just turn that off which basically halves the power. Very clean tone. Click this sustain. So, yes, it is. So you just flick that in. So that's a bit all or nothing. I don't think there's a control for that. No, no that's a bit all or nothing.
interesting. That don't sound half bad for a solid state amp, you know. Give, especially given how old this is, because it's quite a few years old. So that doesn't sound half bad. So the reverb. And it's usual thing. Massive overkill with that, so you only ever put a bit in. This studio and stage just seems to half or double the power, whichever way you want to look at that. Look at the other channel. The other channel is just pretty basic, really, just volume, volume, treble, and bass. That's the H&H uh, IC100 head, which came in for some capacitors, and it had a few dry joints, and the pots needed cleaning, usual things. But you know, for a budget amp, that's not too bad at all. You know, you could quite happily gig with that if uh, at entry level, you know, if you're a young up and starting band. Not sure what the logo is on the top, by the way, um, but it also looks like it was painted on upside down unless my knowledge of hieroglyphics which is very poor so um, yeah so a great a great amp really for what it is and I'm quite surprised because I remember these being around when when uh, I was much younger and didn't really pay that much attention to them really I kind of bought a Marshall JCM 800 combo in 1984 and uh, just always used tube amps after that really but so that's not a half bad budget amplifier really for someone so uh, so there we go so that's uh, that'll do it for this one so thanks again for watching um, and putting up with me plonking away on this guitar rather rustily as well uh, you all take care and I'll see you all in a future video so you all take care bye bye for now